In this video, we want to look at problems dealing with factoring by grouping. If we look at this first problem, we have four terms. Remember that factoring by grouping requires you to have four terms so that you can actually create your groups, find the greatest common factor for each group, and then finish the job. Now, if we look here, in this first group, there's a common factor. And the common factor for that group is simply x squared. When I take out x squared, what will I have left? I'm just going to have x plus 3. You can easily check this by distributing the x squared back, and you're going to get x to the third plus 3x squared. Moving along to the second group, we have a positive 7x and a positive 21. The common factor in this group is a positive 7. And we need to write this plus 7, otherwise it would look like multiplication with the x plus 3. If I take out the plus 7, I'm going to have, amazingly enough, I'm going to have x plus 3 again. Now, in order for us to factor by grouping, this factor must match up with that factor. Now we see that that is the case, so we're going to factor out this huge common factor of x plus 3. So this x plus 3 is going to be factored out of both this first group and the second group. And when I factor that out, I'm going to have x squared from the first group and a plus 7 from the second group. You can easily check this by foiling or multiplying this back out, and you're going to get back to the original. Okay, let's look at another example. Here we have 9x to the third minus 12x squared minus 3x plus 4. It's very similar to the last problem that we did. If we look at this whole problem, there is no greatest common factor other than 1. So that means we need to proceed to factor by grouping because we have four terms. If we look in this first group, what's the greatest common factor? Between the 9 and the 12, the common factor is 3. If we look at the variables, we know that we can take x squared out of each of these guys. So that's what we're going to do. We take out 3x squared, and then we're going to be left with 3x and minus 4. Let's take a look at the second group here. The second group leads off with a negative. So if it leads off with a negative, we know that we need to factor out a negative along with a common factor. Now these guys don't have anything in common, so we're just going to do take out a minus 1 here. If I take out that negative 1, it's going to change the signs to make this 3x and minus 4. So, the 3x minus 4s are going to match up, and that's what I'm going to pull out in front of my factorization. So here's 3x minus 4, and then I write what's left over which of course is going to give me the 3x squared and the minus 1. So here is my factorization. Now let's take a look at this last problem right here. A little bit more challenging. We're going to see why here in just a moment. In the first group right here, common factor is just going to be x squared. Nothing more than that. If I take out x squared, I'm going to be left with 2x plus 5. Okay, no big deal, just like we've done everything else before. In this next group, negative 18x minus 45 is just like what we did in the last problem. You lead off with a negative, so you need to factor out a negative. Common factor here is a 9, so take out a negative 9 from both of those. When you factor that out, it's like you're dividing negative 9 into both of them. 
So you're going to be left with a 2x plus 5. And then we just finish like we've been doing with these factoring by grouping problems. 2x plus 5 is the big common factor that comes out in front. So here's my 2x plus 5. And then the stuff that I'm left with is x squared minus 9. Now, at this point in the game, we would just leave it like this. However, in 0310 and later on in 0308, we know that we can do more with this x squared minus 9. So that's what we're going to work on right now. The x squared minus 9 is actually a difference of squares. Remember that when you have something of the form a squared minus b squared, he's going to break down as a plus b times a minus b. So, in this problem, I'm going to bring the 2x plus 5 down because I didn't change him at all. I can't do anything else with him. But the x squared minus 9 will factor further. x squared is a square of x and 9 is the square of 3. So put my plus, my minus, and now I'm done. Remember, just because you have an x squared that does not mean that there's more that can be factored. In this last example, I had 3x squared minus 1, but I couldn't do anything else with that. In this problem, I had x squared minus 9, that matched up with this difference of squares, and that gave me x plus 3x minus 3, along with the 2x plus 5 factor here.